welcome everyone to the instructor's channel. Here we are again for our weekly video. And today's topic is techniques for evaluating individual student learning. And the techniques we'll be discussing today are right here. The objective technique includes multiple choice questions, matching, true and false, and fill in the blanks. These are paper and pencil tests, what we call, and actually students select an appropriate answer from alternatives. The advantage, very easy, quick to score, and avoiding bias. Some of the considerations are that sometimes questions that require high, uh, higher level of thinking will be difficult and time consuming to prepare. Um, it may cause also misinterpretation and actually you don't get much information why they chose one alternative over the other. The essay style. It's a still a test that includes paper and pencil, but you have your learners to discuss, analyze, describe, explain, and usually you have open-ended questions and so you can see their insights and reflections. It, less, it is less preparation time for you as an instructor. It encourages creative thinking. However, it is time consuming to mark and sometimes the learner's writing ability may limit their demonstration of what they know, what they think. Student demonstration of a skill. So what does it do? The student performs a skill according to the standards given in the course. The advantages to that is that it can be live or it can be video recorded. And it's easy to check, actually to score, because you have this checklist and you just mark um, and you can give the corrected feedback right away. Some considerations that you need to make is be very clear with the objectives, with the expectations and the assessment criteria for this skill and also involve the peers so that they provide the feedback. Informal student writing. It's usually a one-page memo that they write to the instructor or a journal writing or learning logs, uh, sometimes short summaries, but all in all, it's all marked uh, holistically. So you get information about how the learner is processing the, the learning, if they have any questions, they are also tracking themselves, their own learning. And the disadvantage is that they may be unfamiliar with this tool, so you need to coach them first. And definitely it's time consuming for you to market. Student created product. That's generally a presentation or some kind of video or dramatization. Um, a graphic, an artwork. It's an, uh, actually a, another learning opportunity. It involves also research. And the only consideration is that you may need to coach them in developing their own ideas in the first place. Informal student observations. And this is when the instructor observes the discussion in the groups and may be assessing also panels of presentations. Um, but immediately you get a feeling of what the learners know, what is their level of understanding. The only consideration is that you will need to focus on one group at a time and you will probably need a checklist with you. And some learners may be also a bit quiet because they feel nervous being observed. Student self-assessment and interview with instructor. So what is it? It's based on their own goal setting and self-assessment. The instructor only helps to plan and to identify the resources for learning. So that learner takes responsibility for their own learning and evaluation. One consideration is that it's time consuming. So consider doing it while other learners are working and always refer back to the goals. Peer assessment. So by using the criteria, learners will provide written or oral feedback to their peers. The advantages, learners internalize this criteria and actually they start assessing themselves. So they get a better understanding of what is important, what is expected for them in the evaluation. Another thing to consider here is, however, that you may need to model and monitor the way they provide that feedback. Questions to consider before evaluating learners' progress. 
Will this evaluation be graded? Should this evaluation be used to show the learner's accomplishment or other things? Should effort be rewarded? And how much should you comment? Can I evaluate as an instructor something without commenting on it? Other questions that you may consider is, how can I be objective, especially in a written assignment? Do my evaluations reflect my original objectives, my learning objectives? Do learners know what I think is important? And if I am too specific, will I curtail their activity? How do I reward learners for their efforts when their final produce is not up to par? Thank you for watching this video. Please leave your comments and suggestions for future topics below. We'll answer to each of you. And before you go, do subscribe to the channel right now. You don't want to miss any upcoming content. See you next week. And in the meantime, we'll leave you with two other videos that you may consider watching as well. Happy training, instructors!